So in this video, we're going to look at some types of related conditional statements. Uh, so this is a uh, tack on to what we talked about last time. Don't forget conditional statement is any, anything that's going to be in the if then form, but we can twist these around to make different forms of statements still based off of that same idea. So our first conditional statement that we're going to work off of is the conditional. If it is a triangle, then it has three sides. So we know from earlier classes that this is a true statement. And, you know, sometimes we might be able to figure out what our true statements are just by the nature of the information that's in the, um, in the sentence. But we'll talk more about that um, later in this lesson and in a couple future lessons with how we can put those together to make a logical argument. So first, let's just look at our main five types. So conditional statement, what we're starting with, it's always a good idea to identify what's your hypothesis, what's your conclusion, just so you know what you're working with. So in our first statement, it is a triangle, is our hypothesis, let's call that P, and it has three sides, let's call that Q. And again, don't forget, when you're looking at the hypothesis and conclusion, you're only using the if and the then to show you where the statements are. So it is a triangle, is your hypothesis, not if it is a triangle. And if we wrote this out in symbolic notation, it would look like if P, then Q. So our inverse is when we actually negate both sentences. So in symbolic notation, that's gonna look like not P, arrow, not Q. And we wanna do the same thing with our statements. So if our original conditional is, if it's a triangle, then it has three sides, and we just negate both sentences, then that's going to look like if it is not a triangle, then it doesn't have three sides. And pardon me while I abbreviate because I know it's a limited space to write. Um, so inverse, we change the negation. Converse, we go back to the original conditional statement, if P then Q, and what we're going to do is we're going to switch the order on them. So symbolically, that's going to look like if Q then P. So if we switch around the ideas, we're going to say if it has three sides, then it is a triangle. Contrapositive, we actually do both of those actions. So we're going to switch it and we're going to flip it. So symbolically, this is going to look like negation Q, arrow negation P, and we do the same thing with our sentence. So if it doesn't have three sides, then it isn't a triangle. Our last type of statement is the biconditional. So think about taking this apart. What other words do you know have that same prefix? So what comes to mind for me is bicycle, and it has two wheels. So a biconditional, it's dealing with conditional, but it's kind of two sentences in one and we can actually read it in both directions. So the way we write this, and this is a new symbol, would be P double arrow Q. And the way we state this is using the connector in the middle, if and only if. So this statement's a little different in that we don't have the if then structure like we do in the conditional statements. Um, but it is still related because it still has the same kind of symbols. We're still working with our hypothesis and conclusion, just having that different connector in the middle. So if we write this out, this would, go, this would look like, again, basing it off of that conditional statement that we started with. It is a triangle if and only if it has three sides. So we technically have five types of conditional statements, four that are related to the original conditional. So conditional if P then Q, inverse, we put the nots in front, 
converse, again, take the original conditional and we change the order, contrapositive, where we do both, and biconditional. And I almost like to remember this, if anyone's read or watched Harry Potter, there's something in, I think, the first movie where Hermione's trying to teach her friends how to do the Lingardium or Wingardium Leviosa spell, I believe. And it's a swish and flick. Well, I kind of like to think of that with our converse statements. Inverse is switch, converse is flip. So switch and flip. Converse, you're switching the order. Inverse, you're throwing the knots in front. So you could also think of it as converse is switch, inverse is knot. And if you repeat that a few times, that might help you get the pattern stuck in your head. Converse is switch, inverse is knot. Okay, let's look at a couple examples. So here we go, first practice problem. Write each related conditional statement. So we're starting with, if it is Saturday, then there is no school. So if you've been acting appropriately, you have no school on Saturday. So again, converse is switch, inverse is not. So our converse, we would take our original statement, which is in the form P, arrow Q. Converse, we switch it, so it's gonna be Q, arrow p. So if we do that with a the statement they gave you, if there is no school, then it is Saturday. Inverse, again, we threw the negations in front. Converse is switch, inverse is not. So inverse is not p, arrow, not q. Be very careful. You always want to go back to the original conditional statement before you start doing any of your rewrites. So I'm still always going back and comparing it to the, if it is Saturday, then there is no school. So inverse, if I negate the first statement, it's going to say, if it, excuse me, if it is not Saturday, and forgive the abbreviation, then we have to negate the second one. So then, well, wait a second. There is no school. So if we negate that and it's already negated, what's the opposite of a negative? Well, in algebra, opposite of a negative is a positive. So we just need to write it as a positive statement. So then there is school. Now I realize this might look a little weird, because I just gave you a statement that's not always true. If it's not Saturday, then there is school. Well, what are some other situations where it's not Saturday, but we don't have school? So we have Sunday, we have holidays. So just because we're writing this conditional statement doesn't mean we're necessarily writing a true statement. We're just following the pattern for this. Contrapositive, not Q, then not so again, switch and flip. We're doing both the negation and the rearrangement. So negation of Q, we actually know both of these. We use these statements in the inverse. We just have to switch the order to make it fit the contrapositive pattern. So if there is school, then it is not Saturday. And in this case, that happens to be a true statement, but that's not always going to be the case. Biconditional, P, double arrow Q. But again, biconditional is the weird one. So we have the different connector in the middle, the if and only if. So we take off the if and the then from the original statement, from the original conditional statement, and we just throw an if and only if in the middle. So it is Saturday if and only if there is no school. Because again, I'm going back to that original conditional statement to write this. So again, converse is switch, inverse is not. Contrapositive, you do both. Biconditional, you're throwing the if and only if in the middle. Okay, I'm going to suggest go ahead, pause the video, and try out the second example. Um, and then you'll see the answers pop up that I'm going to write out in a sec. So again, go through, check your examples, and check against what I have on these 
um, sentences. But again, be careful. Converse, inverse, contrapositive, biconditional, you're always going back to that original conditional form that you were given before you start applying your orders. Alrighty, so the question below says, are these true statements? So this piece is actually a bit beyond some of what we need to talk about in geometry. There are some scenarios where we know that if we start with a true statement, our following statement is always going to be true. And those are the ones we're going to concentrate on. So here are our situations, our two situations where this might be true. So first off, our contrapositive. So that's our first one to enter. So if our contrapositive is given, it is always going to have the same truth value as what we started with. So as the conditional. So again, let me scroll back up to our example. So we have in our practice number one problem, if there's no school, then it is Saturday. So generally that is a true statement. So our contrapositive should also be a true statement. So if we go through and we read our contrapositive, if there is school, then it is not Saturday. Again, generally that is a true statement. And so the contrapositive had, excuse me, I was referring to the wrong one. We're looking to our original statement all the way at the top. So if it is Saturday, then there is no school. There we go. That is absolutely a true statement in most situations. It has the same truth value as contrapositive. Okay, let's try that on or check that on question two as well. Let me change my color. There we go. So the original conditional statement, if the temperature is 25 degrees, then it is below freezing. That is a true statement. Freezing is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So it should have the same truth value as our contrapositive, which says if it isn't below freezing, then it isn't 25. Well, that's true. It would have to be above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The second scenario is the biconditional is only going to be true if both versions of that statement are true. So it has to be both the conditional, in other words, the if P then Q statement, and it also has to be the switched order, which what is it when you switch the order? Exactly, that's your converse. So that's if Q then P. So that's the last examples that we want to look at. And again, I'm not going to do all of these, but I will post the finished copy of these notes. So again, you can try them on your own and then check it against the key that I put on there. So let's just try the first one to start. So if angles form a linear pair, then they add to 180 degrees. So I'm going to skip that question for now because that's something that we're actually going to cover in unit two. Again, I'll still fill that in in the version that I'll post online, but let's jump to number four because that's something that you've talked about before. Two angles are complementary if and only if the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. So they gave us the biconditional. And again, I know that because of the if and only if that's in there. So let's kind of unpack that and write the two statements that we would have probably started with. So our conditional statement could have been just the starting statement and the finishing statement. So if two angles are complementary, and again, I'm going to abbreviate a little bit, then their sum is 90 degrees. And so that's something that you've talked about in a previous class. We know that's true. So our converse of that, again, converse is when we switch the order. So if we just switch the hypothesis and conclusion, we would have if their sum is 90 degrees, then two angles are complementary. Alrighty, so also let's combine this in with the contrapositive and look at all the truth values altogether. So again, contrapositive statement, we want to take that from our original conditional that we wrote. So our original conditional was this guy, that if two angles are complementary, then they add to 90 degrees. So we're going to use that to make our contrapositive, which again, contrapositive is do everything, switch and flip. So if their sum is 90 
excuse me, if we're doing contrapositive, what do I have to put in there? So if their sum is not 90 degrees, then two angles are not complementary. So let's go ahead and think about our truth values on this. Let me change to a different color. Okay, so our original statement, if two angles are complementary, then their sum is 90 degrees. We know that's true from previous classes, so let's say true over in the column. Okay, our converse statement, if their sum is 90 degrees, then two angles are complementary. Well, again, that's kind of part of our definition. We know if two angles add up to 90, they have to be complementary. And if they're complementary, we automatically know they add up to 90. It's part of our definition that we could go kind of either direction with this. And in fact, most definitions that we're going to look at in geometry, if they're not a good definition, if you can't state them as a biconditional statement, you have to be able to go both ways through that information. Otherwise, it's not a, it's not a valid definition. It's not constructed very well. And then our last statement, if their sum is not 90 degrees, then two angles are not complementary. So for example, we might say if we have two angles like 20 degrees and 60 degrees, well, they don't add up to 90 degrees, they only add up to 80 degrees. So I can't call them complementary. So that contrapositive statement, well, their sum isn't 90, so I can't call them complementary, well, that's true. Again, same truth value as our original conditional statement. Okay. So you're not gonna see too many of those problems, but again, go back, retry those, uh, and then when you're ready, go ahead and open up the key to the notes to see how you did on it. I'm going to, after you do this video, I want you to complete a Desmos activity, which is just trying to match things up. That is a completion grade, because I want you to play around with that. And I'm gonna be online during class, so if you do come up against any questions in that Desmos activity, I can actually pop in and see what people are doing real time. So definitely pop back into Zoom and let me know if you have any questions or shoot me a text on my Google Voice number and you know I can help you out if you get stuck. And then you are doing your lesson check and check-in form at the end of class. Again, let me know if you have any questions.